Dennis Jackson has been at the Heinz Leamington plant since 1964. He was devastated by news of the plant's closure. I actually cried. I uh, went back to my office and uh, all the girls from Human Resources come in and we all sort of blubbered a little bit because we didn't really know that was going to happen. We knew something a little bit was going to happen, but when that complete, it just devastated me. I was asked to be interviewed like this because of my collection that night and uh, the local papers and a couple TV. And I couldn't do it. I was, uh, I was even now talking about it. As you can see, I'm I'm sort of lost. It's my, my whole life is Heinz. Since retiring in 2000, Dennis Jackson has run the gift shop at the Heinz plant. His pride and joy is his collection of Heinz memorabilia through the ages. I haven't looked at these things in a long time. I haven't changed them in a long time either. Really not too much you can change in here. But, uh, that's our first product right there. Or Mr. Heinz's. Horseradish, and those two containers down there from the first year here in Leamington, 1909. It's hard to imagine the town of Leamington without the Heinz plant. Given the 104-year-old history, there are plenty of memories of the days gone by. I grew up right on the corner of Erie and Georgia Avenue, which is one Georgia Avenue. And back in the day when I was a kid, uh, when they were bringing in the, the flatbed trailers behind tractors and the tomato baskets stacked in pyramids, that was our corner they always took. So 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, the tractors slow down, speed up as they get around the corner, and I'd be out there with a shovel cleaning up the mess when the baskets tipped over. So I uh, worked for, on the farm when I was a kid. When I was 10 to 16 years old on the farm in the, in the summers. And I helped, helped pick tomatoes, which I wasn't really good at when I was a kid and then I hated that so I, I didn't mind loading tomatoes. And then I got older and I would uh, bring the loads into Heinz. But it's not just plant workers who will be affected by this closure. There are 43 tomato farmers who grow directly for Heinz and they don't know what lies ahead. There was um, uh, some thinking that, that if, if the, the factory would close to growers, not only growers, but, but even, even to the workers that, that there would be a, a year or two uh, warning. Uh, this, this had happened with other Heinz plants where there was uh, a year's warning and so forth. And, and so I think the, the, that it was just so sudden, uh, there was no warning at all, um, has left a lot of people in a tailspin. We were shocked that uh, the company flipped the switch and closed the entire facility. Uh, over the years, we had began to question whether they would continue to buy tomatoes from us as we were the last facility in the world where they bought raw tomatoes. Their company uh, um, operational motive uh, has been in the other parts of the world to buy paste and then make their famous ketchup. Most of these farmers have been growing tomatoes for several generations. This $50 million industry is their livelihood. Growers had invested heavily in prime land, irrigation, machinery, uh, which, which all has, 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 has just come to a standstill. This is our tomato harvester that we use for harvesting to tomatoes. It is a, a, a once over destructive harvest that we do. Um, we, we do around uh, 200 ton a day with it. It is uh, used exclusively for tomatoes only and uh, at this point we do not know what we will do with it. Most of the farmers who grew tomatoes for Heinz say they've already laid the groundwork for next season's crop. Their biggest challenge right now is trying to find alternate crops and sources of income to replace acres and acres of luscious tomato fields. Tomatoes were a major part of our operation. And so we're in scramble mode right now, putting a business plan together that keeps Lycoland farms viable for the coming year. You have 43 growers that, that have lost their contract. Um, the ability to sell the, 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 uh, the, this equipment is, is, is almost nil. So it, it becomes completely useless. 
for several decades now, Leamington has been home to a tomato festival every summer. This year, it could be a solemn occasion. I've been the last few years, I've been the only thing Heinz in the, in the Tomato Fest parade. Uh, I don't know if I'll be in it again this year or not. I hope I will be. I'm still proud of Heinz. Uh, as far as I know, the, I think they said they're going to, uh, the organizers are going to uh, do the Tomato Fest this year and make it bigger and better. Ross Seely knows tough times lie ahead for Heinz workers. You know, to lose those jobs in a perfect, perfectly profitable uh, place, how do you answer that? How do you, how do you tell those people, you know? And uh, how do they tell that, you know, they go home at the end of the day and they're and, and, and probably pretty lost. And uh, you can't replace those jobs. C. Lee was just six months away from retirement when London's electromotive diesel plant closed. His future was in doubt. If you're 55 years old, you're 58 years old, people don't want you and certainly if they do want you, they don't want to pay you what you used to earn um, for a living. So there's that, there's that part of the getting used to anybody that had to continue working. The Heinz plant in Leamington officially closes on June 27th. I would think it'd be a sad day, yes. Yeah. Um, you know, especially you can see their logos on, on the company, on the buildings, right? And I have to assume those will come down too. So there will be a lot of that visual history that will just go away. Once the closure became official, the focus shifted to negotiating severance packages for all the workers. I, again, I think of the electromotive diesel plant, where they did at the end of the day get a decent package, but that was through a lot of fighting by the CAW to, to make that happen. Whereas Heinz, clearly from day one, they wanted to do the right thing. Uh, they came out with a fairly generous package. That package includes two weeks pay for every year worked at the Heinz plant with no cap. It also includes a productivity bonus of $2,500 and a full year of health benefits. But then once you look at the situation in sort of a, a cold rational light, you say, well, the plant was very old. Um, it was somewhat inefficient compared to newer plants. And as well, both of these companies, Heinz and Kellogg's, were running uh, sufficiently over capacity so there, were, there was room to cut back and they would be a natural choice. Is it a compensation that uh, is a good feeling? Probably not because if you just stayed working, you, you know, you obviously will earn more money but uh, uh, the fact that they were decent to the workers, at the Heinz workers, um, it looks good on Heinz being big, big business and not all big business is nice to the, to the little guys down at the bottom. Especially when people, you know, I don't think Heinz, nobody ever, you know, the big business is there to make money. And, and, and unfortunately, we're in a, uh, you know, a global economy that says we, you know, if we can do it cheaper, we will. For people who will be affected by this closure, they're just trying to stay positive. And I think I see that that's what most everybody is right now. It's hard, but uh, I think everybody... Well, 80% of the people are going to fare okay, not real good, but they're going to move on, you know. It might be in a year or two where a lot of growers say, well, it, it's a, a lot uh, different lifestyle, um, not so much pressure. And, um, I mean, there is one part to me that's looking forward to that, um, looking at a, at a lifestyle that's, that's um, a little easier, uh, not so much pressure for the weather, and, and, and uh, being there every day. And, uh, you know, I, I might look back in a year or two and think, well, uh, we don't have uh, the ability for, for the income off tomatoes like we used to, but then again, maybe, uh, maybe with the lifestyle that uh, change that, w that it'll bring, maybe we'll think, uh, this is not so bad. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's bits of Heinz everywhere in this municipality. They have been uh, an excellent corporate citizen for the past hundred and some odd years. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think they'll ever be forgotten they were here. For Fanshawe Learns, I'm Victor Kaiser.